Welcome back to Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm Curtis Smith. Today we're in Lovington at Yarbrough Elementary School. A lot of schools have an area between classrooms like this one, but Yarbrough has something special, the vision of one of the teachers. So let's go see what Mr. Hogue has done here. Wow, Mr. Hogue, this doesn't look like a school ground. This looks like a beautiful garden. Well, thank you. Welcome to Yarbrough Elementary Nature Center. Wow. Let me take you on a quick tour. I'd love to see okay. it. This is an outdoor classroom, and it's uh, all for hands-on for the kids, for fourth and fifth graders, so let's go. Okay. Behind this is our uh, tropical rainforest, and inside we have all kinds of tropical plants. We have the only banana trees, I think, that grow in Lovington here. <laughs> Okay. And we've got some finches and some chameleons. It's a really neat area for hands-on experiences for uh, the tropical plants, humidity and things like that related to science. So you brought the tropics to Lovington? Yes, I was frustrated because I couldn't take the kids to the rainforest, so I decided to bring the rainforest to the kids. And then we just walk right outside and you're into this area now. Outside is our aquatic area with a recycling the water here with our waterfall. We have a uh, perennial garden behind us and then over here to our left is the pond area. We've got a lot of aquatic uh, fish, and this is where we study about different kind of plants that will uh, grow in water, and it's a neat area. In fact, this is the most favorite of the kids. As you're leaving the pond area, we go into another ecosystem, and this is our forest area with different kinds of pine trees. Here we take the kids in. We can study the different shapes of the needles and the names of trees, our state tree. And uh, it's a neat area for just, even for kids to come out and just read books under the shade and the, hear the whispering of the pines. It's a good habitat for wildlife, for the birds to come to. There's a lot of birds here, but the funny thing is usually birds, not too many birds are around until 3.10 when the kids, the bell rings and the kids leave, then they all flock in. Pretty wise birds. I right? guess they are, yes. Here's some of the gourds we have in the tree that we planted this year, and, and we, everyone had a chance to make uh, birdhouses. So the gourd, the gourd crop was pretty good this year. You we, grew your own gourds? Yes, we did. Ah. Pumpkins and gourds. Okay, and you're using this for bird houses? Yes, and they all got to take them home and hang them in the tree for the birds. Well, let's go in the forest area and I'll show you around there. Well, this really does look like a forest. Yes, it's a Beautiful really trees. neat area. I can see where the students would enjoy coming in here to read and do the things you were describing. They do. So yeah. it's a great area to explore. What do we have on the other side? Well, on the other side, in fact, let's go over here and I'll show the, our, our bog and then oh. we'll show our research center, we call it. Well, that sounds interesting. This does look like a bog. I see plants that belong in a wet area. Yes, on our way out of the forest area, we have this uh, shaded area and it, this is where the, the water hose always leaked and we decided just to build our bog here and great place. The kids bring their turtles and we've got turtles in here and just the neat, it attracts a lot of wildlife. Okay, and you said you have a research center here too. Yes, let me show you the research center. It's over here. Okay. Okay, I see we're going to walk out of the forest into an open area like a meadow, but this isn't a normal meadow. No, we call this our research center. Uh -huh. This is the center of the center. This okay. is where we bring out our microscopes and we do all kinds of hands-on activities and we even bring out our sack lunches once in a while and have lunch here. Looks like a nice area for that. And then just beyond it looks like you've got some more. Yeah, sure do. Let me show you some more. Okay. Right before we get to our archaeological dig, we have the, we call this the Daffodil Hill. Uh, we got a bunch of daffodils and the kids planted these and it's a really neat area when the springtime is here. But let me show you this dig we've got over here. Okay. This is our archaeological dig. This is where the kids come out and we dig up the past. We have three areas. This area right here is our fossils and they come out here and dig up different kind of fossils and we study those. The other two areas, we have an area that is uh, our Indian artifacts. We have broken pottery, uh, firestone, uh, and things pertaining to Indian with a lot of arrowheads in there that you pick out. Then we have a section just rock and minerals that we can do hands-on activities and discover the kinds of rocks. Well, now this is interesting. This looks like the desert. This is our desert ecosystem, our living desert. Yes, sir? It's definitely living because it's not dead. There's the desert spoon, the red yuccas, yuccas, pinon, a lot of plants in here. It's a really neat area for the kids to come and, and study plants that grow in a hot area in a region, especially this area in southern, southeastern New Mexico. 
Well, this whole area is wonderful from one ecosystem to the next, to the next, to the next. Anyone would be pleased to have this as a garden, yet this is a classroom. This is a classroom, an outdoor classroom for the kids. Well, Mr. Hogue, thank you so much for sharing this thank with us. Thank you for coming.